Hey, what's going on everyone? Now, you know I live in South Florida and every once in a while I'll get a call from the FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, to help them out. They know I'm a bleeding heart for scaly reptiles and unfortunately, this feral iguana was found in someone's backyard down south and yes, you can see the poor thing has been tied up. So what we're gonna do on this episode of Camp Cannon is we're gonna do a little reptile rescue. We're gonna get this animal out, we're gonna get it untied, we're gonna hold on to it, and hopefully give it a second chance at life, however, in captivity. So stick around. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation, education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Ken. So this just breaks the heart, you know, I mean, this is a beautiful male green iguana. As you know, they are non-native to Florida, but they are found in some abundance here in South Florida. We have populations of these. This particular population comes out of Central America. You can tell because it actually has a rostral projection. It's a little horn, but not a true horn because there's no bone on the inside. But anyhow, here's the problem, man. We're at the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, and I'm always stoked to help out Florida Fish and Wildlife. Uh, they know I love reptiles. And so what I've noticed, and we're gonna see inside, this animal has suffered injury uh, to his claws. Uh, he's actually degloved his claws because they were bound together by some kind of wire we gotta cut. And then look at how this is. This was a sling. So they were just carrying this animal around. Now, in Central America, these animals are eaten quite frequently. And I get it, you know, it's a protein source. But uh, thankfully we live in the United States. I'm really happy to be here. And you guys know Erica and my pal Amy. We've got an interesting story on the screen of Juana, ladies. And I figured I'll have you take a look at it. Do you mind if I... No, um, I'll have you take a look at it. So this animal was found in a home out in the back by the meter reader. They called animal welfare, animal welfare called Fish and Wildlife, obviously. So they called me as they normally do, which is really cool. It's an honor to, to be able to help out. Uh, that's what I was saying about, I, I, you know, whatever problems the U.S. has, at least we do have people that, you know, afford animals some kind of rights and comfort here. So what we're going to do, Aim, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let's, let's uh, get this guy. Do they have any down. idea how long he's been like this? No idea, but I can tell you that, and this is for you folks to know at home too, when you squeeze the lizard's legs, if they their skin doesn't go back immediately, it means that the animal has been dehydrated. So it's going back pretty quickly. I don't think it's been too long, but the animal's clearly he's stressed. Broken nail yeah, he's always oh, he's degloved. He's degloved oh, his fingers. God. And these two fingers, Amy, are oh, tethered together. Yeah. Oh, I know. So I we we've got to somehow cut these in order to get them All undone. Right, well, let's get his legs undone. Well, May I make a suggestion? Sure, I'm concerned. Yeah, go ahead. Here's what I'm concerned about. Is if we cut this passion? first, he's gonna rip those off. They're already look, looking like they're gonna be sacrificed. So let's cut these first, then cut his arms, and we can treat. Has he been whipping at all? Or he's not he been whipping been so or anything. Calm? He's just, I think he's in shock, to be perfectly honest. I think he's been like this a while. We are getting a lot of movement out of his eyes, so. Yeah, I've noticed that. He's, he's like, tired, I'm man. I just want to get closer and look at those toes, because I don't know if that's gonna start gushing on us, if we should cauterize it to take it off. I don't know. Do cauter but there now? is some kind of wire around it, so. Let's just see what we got first. You're the boss. If I get whipped, though, I'm gonna. Like, I'll hold his. You know what that means. Just give me a second. <laughs> Like, you know what that means for you guys if yeah. I get whipped. Oh, and by the way, like, she's a, such a sweetie, but um, Amy has issues with lizards. She does. She's not crocodiles, not alligators, littler ones. Well, crocodiles and alligators aren't lizards, but you know what she means. I, you know Lizard what I mean. form, but yeah. yeah. So when Amy would come over and help me with my animals, the lizards were a very big test. She'd have her husband come in and help her. So. Or I'd have to dress like a space man. Yeah, well, yeah, so. here what we're going to do, have a look there. You can see, and I'll just cover his eyes to calm him down. But you can see right there. Some oh my drama gosh, going. so this is like two different feet. Here. It's two different fingers that have been tied together, and you know. I can almost assuredly tell you that we're going to lose those two um, claws. Just one piece holding yeah. this together right here. It, now, doesn't, it doesn't actually look like there's that much blood flow. I think that's piece. what makes me think it's been there for a while. Yeah, or at least I mean, a couple days. Is, so we don't, probably don't even need the cautery. Snip it. 
yeah. it looks like there's exposed bone. Now sometimes you'll see reptiles or iguanas in captivity and they were kept in an enclosure that had too small a wire mesh. Here we go. And what happens is because of that small wire mesh, they get their toenails caught in there and actually rip off their claws just from climbing around. How'd it go? Oh my God. All right. What a good kid. See this, guys? This probably doesn't hurt nearly as bad as what you've been through, dude. Really? That is a mess right there. We're going to have to sniff it. Yeah. Maybe we'll even knock you out for that. Uh. That's going to be a little bit more intense. We'll clean that up. Let's go ahead and get these legs separated, right. though. Here we go. We're going to cut these See legs if we can get some of this. free. Oh, and girls, by the way, they actually made like a sling to carry them. Oh. A handbag. Jeez. Yeah. Not a very fashionable oh, handbag. Sorry. We have to cut this too. Oh yeah. So the, just the, trying, I mean, you can the just, circulation's been bad. You can just feel how long it's been sitting like that. I mean. Oh, oh my kiddo. gosh. I mean, you, you just feel how you rigid feel, it is. Yeah. I mean, those muscles are just atrophy. sitting in that position. Gosh, I hope, oh, hope yeah, this yeah, yeah. can make a recovery. Because I'm definitely going to give him a home. I have been saying ever since I went and we saw our friends at ZooMed, I saw that very big, large male iguana they had. It's just such a regal animal when you get a large green iguana. And this is why you have to be careful with the pet you choose because you get them as inexpensive babies. They get large. People dump them, let them go. Now we have populations of these animals in South Florida. And unfortunately, uh, we have people that... That we'll catch them and use them for food here too. Can you so. just look at how long those scales have been. Yeah, these these dorsal spines have been crumpled down. So he's going to need some serious recovery here. Gosh, it's not easy, is it? No, it's like it's rotted almost. All right. Oh, honey. Yeah, we got this damn thing. Oh, there's that little skull. Let me really see if I can. That, oh, look at his poor eyes closed. And he's like that. There we go. Oh, baby. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. See the spines? They're so, there's no form to them anymore. See, they should be rigid like this, but these are just crumpled. No blood flow. No blood flow. Oh, again, we have to help him out. We're going to do some physical therapy on this guy. Sucks, man. So the thing that worries me a little bit is that there's no fight at all in this animal. I mean, usually a wild iguana like this would be thrashing that tail, um, moving all about. But there's bone right there. Yeah, there's bone right there. Shucks. We're going to have to trim that. I think the only thing holding it on is, is maybe it's a mine. It's just a little bit of skin or something. Yeah. I mean, there's really nothing here. Now that we're getting some of that off of there, there's this is, I'm just I'm just amazed at the color that's left to it. But yeah, there's the knuckle right there. You can see the knuckle. Everything. And you know, guys, I'm not 100% opposed to eating animals, obviously, but I mean, if you're going to do it, you got to, it's got to be, be humane. humane. Got to be treated humanely. I mean, I'm not here to judge anyone. I personally wouldn't eat an iguana, but uh, I've been known to eat a cow every once in a while. But you just got to treat animals with respect because, in my opinion, when an animal gets eaten, it's giving uh, the ultimate sacrifice so that you can continue on. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that just that was fell that wasn't right even off. on. That was barely holding on, and that skin and everything is just so dead. And you can see right down to the knuckle there. Wow. The amount of pain that must remove just by getting those. Well, it's been so long. I think that. You know, it's going to start turning necrotic. Oh, gosh. Sure. And then it would just start traveling up into a system. It would go systemic. And there you go. You know, and with these guys, because their metabolism is so slow, you know, it would take forever. To die. To, to die. I mean, that's just so inhumane. A long, agonizing death. Gosh. I know. Straightening just, that leg out. It's just, it's, you can feel it, the you resistance. You can feel. That's what I mean. Like, they, they should have full range of motion. Feel here. the resistance. He's been like that for a while. Look at this, guys. There you go, just the muscle memory goes right back to where it was because it's been like that for yep. so long. Oh my gosh. Well, I think, Amy, we've got them cleaned off. Let's try and give him a let's, soak. Yeah, let's give him a soak and then just let him calm down a little. Sounds I mean, he's good. He's been through so much. So guys, we're going to soak him. We're going to get him a little bit more stabilized and then we're going to pick things up. And, uh, well, 
hopefully we have a good prognosis on. All right, so I thought I was going to be able to bring this animal home and get him set up in a, in a nice enclosure, but, you know, he, we have soaked him, no response. In fact, when the water went over his nares, his nostrils, he didn't pull his head up out of the water. So Amy and Erica and I think that this animal has been tied up for so long that the blood flow was just centered around his core. Um, if you notice, there's also different colors. Legs are a different color than the rest of them. And we feel that that's because there just was not enough blood flow to his extremities from being tied up like that. So Amy's got him on some oxygen right now to try and get more of that in his blood. We're gonna keep him at Bush Wildlife Sanctuary overnight. So what I'll have to do for you folks out there at home is I'm gonna let you know what happens. Hopefully this animal will make a recovery. And I wanna thank Amy and Erica and Bush Wildlife Sanctuary for helping me out and the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission for giving me the chance to try and save an animal uh, that I know I do, I love, and I'm sure all of you do as well. And hopefully we'll have some good news after this guy rests for a bit longer. Okay, so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on the uh, green iguana that we got from Fish and Wildlife here. And uh, he looks to be doing well. He's definitely a wild iguana, so he doesn't like to be held. Um, so I'm trying to just get him acclimated to being in a cage. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to let this animal go because it is a non-native animal here in Florida. So once it's been captive, it's illegal to let them go. Uh, but the good news is, is that this animal is not gonna become dinner to anyone. And his wounds have been healing. Uh, he's been eating a little bit, you know, again, that's going to be an adjustment for him in captivity. Uh, I've had to just start him on a, some tortoise diet, some iguana diet, and uh, some of the hibiscus leaves and flowers and so on. But I do that gently by, by grabbing him and then getting it in his mouth, and then he likes the taste of it, and we just kind of get him acclimated to that whole thing. So I haven't got a name for him, but he's doing well, and I think this is a happy ending, man. So I'm pretty psyched that we were able to uh, help out Florida Fish and Wildlife. It's always an honor to help them out and do the right thing for uh, the animals, whether or not they are native or non-native. FWC is definitely doing a good job out there keeping things uh, under control. So hey guys, I just want to leave by letting you know uh, that you should always Definitely, always definitely, I don't know. But you should certainly learn the wildlife laws in your area so you don't commit any unknown crimes. And this way, you're uh, on the right side of the law and uh, the animals will benefit from it. So we'll see you next time on another episode of Camp Cannon. Don't forget, I'm on Instagram under Camp Cannon, Facebook under Camp Cannon, Snapchat under Camp Cannon, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. Happy ending.